Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. That is where Je you know, Genesis 3 story starts. And of course, he begins by questioning the basic motivations of God himself. Um, did God say, why does God not want you to, to eat from all the trees of the garden is the implication. Um, and, 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 and that's where the, the initial crack uh, in, in creation really starts because we fell right in to, to that chasm basically, and, and then uh, widened it in, in that choice and every subsequent choice that has flowed from it. Um, it it's doubting the basic benevolence and mercies of, of God. His desire, God is showing up to walk with us in the cool of the day. I think it's N.T. Wright that describes us as um, we were created to be angled mirrors that, um, that reflect creation's praise back to God and then reflect the sovereignty or as we would talk right around here the kingdom of God into the world and where the circle is broken and, and this is a foundational thing is that that mirror itself is, has malfunctioned. It's, we're not angled um, and the mirror itself is warped. We, we, we have at the root of spiritual confusion a, um, a failure it's a failure, failure of worship, ultimately, is the original disease. The primary Greek word that we're familiar with, you, f you hear often uh, uh, for sin, the translated sin, is hamartia, which is simply to miss the target that you're aiming at. The mirror was angled away in, in the wrong direction. In essence, the mirror was pointed at ourselves, and we liked what we see. Uh, we chose uh, this, this fruit of knowledge of, of good and evil. We chose... Um, we chose information, we chose uh, facts and acquisition uh, over, over life. I mean, it, it's a very primal story that reveals the, the basic breakdown that we've, that we've experienced and that we continue to encounter in all of these, these fundamental ways. Yeah, information is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but, but to see the knowledge of, of, uh, of good and evil represented in a fruit that was, was it looked good, looked like it was, it, was, it was appealing to the eyes, appealing to the taste, and desire to make one wise. It's all the motivation. Uh, the why is always, the why always essentially trumps the what when it comes right down to it. It towers over the what. Uh, why do we want knowledge? Why do we want information? What are we going to do with this? Um, and, and this, was, this was a choice, again, the, the mirror is turned away from reflecting praise to God and reflecting God into the world to where we're looking at a self-reflection. Uh, and, and that's why as, as we go after these other issues, which we need to, as, as image bearers reflecting the, the praises of creation back to God and God's rule into the world, we're going to be reflecting Him into each of these areas, but we will, we will rapidly begin to feel like we're either treading water or on a relentlessly high-speed treadmill uh, because we never run out of areas it seems like and it's because there is some something fundamentally broken we can't fix what's fundamentally broken that's what the cross does we're reflecting that solution um, we are reflecting the justice and mercies of God which have been uh, which have broken into the world through the cross um, but that's why the problems are there, and that's why the problems do continue to multiply and, and, and to crop up. Um, and that's why this becomes a primary focus as far as spiritual confusion. It is seeking within the hearts of individuals as well as on systemic levels within, uh, within the world, with locally, globally, on every level of, of human community and culture uh, as, as the light of the world as the salt of the earth we are seeking to simply get everyone mirror you know that angled mirror back into position where where this 
dimension is happening, reflecting the, the, the praises of creation to God, reflecting uh, the reign and rule of God into the world. And, and that's why that's so fundamental, which, which is the, the proclamation of, of Christ in, uh, in deed and in word. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? It's the most revealing question as, as to what God's heart is for us. Where are you? Um, uh, the, the story of all of Scripture is God's search for us. Um, it's not so much about our search for God. We're, we simply finally catch on to the fact that we have been sought um, uh, from the creation of the world. We have been sought. We have been loved. He has been seeking us. Somehow we've got to get beyond merely offering Jesus as another religious option for people. Uh, it's not about convincing uh, Buddhists or Muslims or LDS or fill in the blank to chuck their religion for our religion, which has Christ over the door. Um, somehow there's got to be a fundamental shift where it ceases becoming about uh, you know, the, the affiliation with, with a religious box that, that contains the appropriate set of parameters and the appropriate paradigm and, and, and collection of propositions and so forth. It's, it's got to become a way again. It's got to become a journey again. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That's not saying that you have to fit through the front door of this church, of that church, of that church. The church is a body of people who are on a journey. The journey is Christ. The destination is a new heavens and a new earth in which justice is fully realized. Mercy is fully unfolded. Um, that's radically different than just trying to get people to switch boxes. And somehow that's, that's a part of that, going back to the mirror, that's a part of that mirror being shifted within ourselves. It is about Christ in me, the hope of glory, reflecting his glory to others and the impact that has. Uh, and, I, and I purposely like to say in deed and in word as opposed to word and deed because deeds typically have to precede the words. The doings precede the sayings. I find it extremely instructive that the first gospel account was Mark, which emphasizes not in toto, but nearly so, the doings of Jesus. You have snippet sayings and you have maybe a couple of addresses that almost reach sermon proportions, which still is like five to ten minutes tops uh, to, to actually if you were to actually preach that sermon as it's recorded. But Mark is about the doings with the sayings. Um, and that's the proto-gospel from which the others were drawn. Um, um, that's where we start. And, and that's, that is, I believe, how the mirror gets turned. It's, it's us being the doings of Christ. Uh, how do you like that one? Being the doings of Christ in the world. That's where we reflect him. We reflect the glory, that glory reflects on them. They become mirrors, likewise reflecting God. And in words, we use words as needed through that. And that's somehow what we've got to turn around. We're not, our job is not to deliver tracks which convince people of something so they change and check the box. But rather, it's a reflected glory through the doings accompanied by the words. They now become living reflections of God as well. And they join the journey of humanity as he is bringing all things together under one head, even Christ. Things in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Um, that's the vision of Paul. And that's, that's really the vision of I Isaiah 61.
Jesus went into Galilee and he said, uh, repent. Uh, you know, the time is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is near. Um, repent and believe the good news. And he went about and he started healing. And the first story, so we have, we have the pronouncement and then we have the practical um, outworking of it. And that's Jesus one day is walking by the Sea of Galilee and he sees, he sees two brothers, uh, Simon and his brother Andrew, and they were mending their nets because they were fishermen. And then he says to them, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they left their nets immediately and they followed him. And he walks a little bit further to other brothers, James and, and his brother John, sons of, of Zebedee, and he calls them. And they immediately left their nets and their father uh, along with the hired hands and they followed him. Um, that is, I mean, honestly, that's it. I mean, that's it right there. It's not gonna look the same. We're not, we're not fishermen on the shore in the Sea of Galilee. It's not Jesus literally walking by at that moment in time saying, come follow me. But that is the call. The, the call of Mark is, is, is not once again to, uh, you know, you have a sin problem, you have, you, you have a debt with God and we need to get that resolved so you can go to heaven. That's still a mirror pointed at me. I, I, I want my personal perspectives to be improved. How can I take care of this? I want this blemish removed. Well, Jesus will help you with that. No, 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 no. This is about following him. And, and it, it is a call to followership or discipleship where we actually drop something and we actually begin following. And we become, as, as, as was said in first century cult, culture, covered in the dust of the rabbi. Because if you have a rabbi, that means you're not just reading something that he says, you're actually following him wherever he goes. And you're watching what he does, you're listening to what he says, and your goal is to become as the rabbi. And as you become as the rabbi, you then embody the life of the rabbi and you carry forth, you become salt of the earth, light, light of the world and so forth. So yeah, I can be gloriously indistinct, I suppose, in that sense. Um, rather than saying, you know, here are the three steps you need to take right now. Um, I would say there is one step that you need to take, and it's the one that Jesus is asking you to take when he looks to you at this moment in your life where you are with the equivalent of your nets along your Sea of Galilee and says, hey, come, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. What step do we need to take? It's that first step as we drop whatever, you know, our, the equivalent of our nets and we follow him.